Abul Kalam Muhyiddin Ahmed Azad or Maulana Azad as is popularly and fondly called is a towering personality of India's freedom struggle a journalist writer poet scholar and politician all rolled into one Azad was born in Mecca in 1888 His father was a scholar of eminence and a renowned Sufi. His mother Alia Begum was the daughter of the Mufti of Medina. She spoke Arabic to her children. The family migrated to Calcutta when Azad was 1901 and their only son died in infancy. Azad was educated at home under the strict discipline of his father Maulana Khairuddin. He studied traditional Islamic curriculum Darsan-e-Nizami which he completed at an amazingly young age. His knowledge of Arabic and Persian was augmented by arithmetic, algebra, geometry and Islamic theology. He learned Urdu on his own and similarly mastered the English language. Well today we are at the launch of this book Islam, Pluralism and Nationhood by Professor Mushirul Hasan. A distinguished panel of speakers namely Mushkun Dubey, K Natwar Singh, Syed Shahid Nadi and Professor S Irfan Habib would share the insights into the book and the life of Maulana Azad. He was the most powerful orator. The only equivalent that we had in India was Atul Bihari Vajpayee in Hindi. Nobody else has touched a Vajpayee or Madan Azad. The only time I had exchanged six words with him was in 1955 when the Saudi king had come to Delhi. The present uh, ruler's father. Now he had brought to them a large number of young princes uh, who during their stay Uh, created havoc uh, <laughs> so at the at the airport in palam uh, big crowd so one day he just turned to me to malara gula club so i went running here and there dekh liya maine kaha sir aapko pandit ji yaad kar rahe hain khairiyat to hai par ye mujhe pata nahi sab khairiyat hai aap chaliye now i don't know if you have read Mohan Sahib's India Wants Freedom, his uh, autobiography. Uh, I personally found it uh, disappointing, but in in it he, in some chapters, pours his heart out. And then he had written in his will that some part of the book will come out 30 years after his death. And Nawaz Kabir, who was then the Minister of State Education, had been given the. I will in the chapter and uh, Himayi Kabir went to Jawaharlal Nehru and said, "Can you give me something to read?" I said, "No, I don't want to read it." And whatever Mazhar has written is acceptable to me. And when the book came out, the, the chapter was sensational. Really, it was. Uh, I remember it. In uh, 1988, it, it came out. 30 years after his death, and uh, Mazhar Nazad taught Jawaharlal Nehru Urdu. So you can see in the book uh, the Urdu that he wrote and uh, lots of uh, uh, couplets and uh, poems, and it's it's very touching. Um, the one place where Jawaharlal writes that you know I was uh, in those days I used to have nightmares uh, at night, and I used to shout, and every time I saw Madana was in the next room, so he come and wake me up. 
और कहते उठो क्या कर रहे हो ईश्वर क्यों बचा रहे हो यहां वे शुड ऑल बी ग्रेटफुल टू प्रोफेसर बुशर हसन फॉर दिस इन वैल्यूएबल कंट्रीब्यूशन टू हिस्ट्री राइटिंग इट्स नॉट ए रैंडम कोलाज ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स ऑन मौलाना इट इज वेरी वेल थॉट आउट इट इज वेल अरेंज्ड एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ ऑल ईच डॉक्यूमेंट्स रिलेटिंग टू ईच फेज ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट फेज ऑफ मौलाना लाइफ इज प्रेसिडेड बाय a short but beautifully written introduction and i think that uh, if uh, these few pages of introduction are put together uh, they would make uh, uh, a biographical sketch of molana of rare beauty and quality uh, this is the impression that i got and i'm quite sure that you will all get that impression if you read this introduction he wanted uh, uh, the rightful place for the urdu language which was a mark of the distinctiveness and identity of the muslims and the, he was he was able to get a resolution passed by the congress party which said that uh, the national language of india would be hindustani written both in nagri and urdu scripts and lastly i would say that uh, when the partition plan was advanced and it was he he participated in all the plans as the leader of the congress party as their negotiator and his view was that india should have a genuinely federal state and in this federal state the federation federal unit and in and he had particularly in mind the muslim majority states should have complete autonomy uh in all matters except foreign affairs defense and customs and uh, he felt that uh, that was the way of keeping the muslims together this particular book uh, is actually a special one because uh, it doesn't mean that other books are not good and one not important this particular book is significant because it deals with something very special not only because it deals with moral azad but it deals with something which uh, with moral azad in a way uh, which normally the way you normally don't find any any uh, historical figure from the past like archives is uh, is a place which is not accessible to everyone as mushir saab said even those scholars who accessed archive didn't access these files because you don't find that signature anywhere in the file so which means whatever has been written on uh, on moral azad till now these files were totally inaccessible so it's a it's a great uh, service which has been done through this volume and i'm sure this is going to be a a useful tool and uh, and repository in this little volume for for the interpretation research on moral azad now coming to morana uh i think he's as the books the title says it begins with islam i think morana today is more important to islam than than anything else because we know globally islam is in a turmoil and uh, we see how islam is being used misused misinterpreted and different aspects of islam being misinterpreted and for me if if any of the scholars the ulama the the maulvis of today care to go back what maulana wrote about islam the way he interpreted islam the way he left behind whatever he wrote on islam i think will be a great service to the to the believers unfortunately we just don't read we just don't care to read what maulana has actually left behind on islam which is something so crucial today that we have to really go back and see unfortunately we care to listen to a half semi literate mullah you know who interprets islam for for most of the people today and do not care to to read what actually maulana the most erudite uh, scholar not only of politics but of islam itself and somebody who had not only the knowledge of theology but a worldly knowledge uh, somebody who was 
who was a master of uh, of uh, social issues intellectual issues and religion of course so somebody who could mix all these three so beautifully and with this experience could could leave behind uh, a legacy intellectual legacy which unfortunately we have not cared to to bother about or even think about we talk about madrasa all the time madrasa education this is a debate which goes on and we don't we don't bother to see what actually when when marana was uh, was interned in rachi in 1917 18 and uh, he set up a madrasa over there while doing it he lay down few few points for the curriculum what what exactly madrasa to teach should teach and and look at that i have just noted down four points and and you can see what what exactly he he meant by madrasa teaching he said he used to he he used a reformed madrasa curriculum with a combination of the best arabic and english education a holistic syllabus instead of old outdated one number 2 english maths indian history geography history of islam and the sciences three to bring madrasa at par with the government run schools and this is important this is important in in today's context also because most of the madrasas actually don't match the the government schools uh, level curriculum level even otherwise fourth curriculum should be designed to keep in mind the university education in the country where will these madrasa students go because they, there is a total mismatch between what they are taught at madrasa level and then what they have to actually study or and uh, pursue at the university level lastly azad felt that no curriculum will be successful with just minor reshuffling here and there new books need to be written in the basics of natural sciences and even even in theology so he he was conscious that you can't even you know carry on with the with available available, available stuff so that way maulana azad actually is is one of the most most relevant uh, figures not only for india generally but for islam particularly and this is on the lighter side and we have heard the reference to, to references to gobare khater and uh, for me i think that is one of the most most interesting text he has left behind he has left behind so many other important issues but gobare khater is something very very unusual very few people know it was also written in in amnagar for prison as not as a book but as letters to uh, to his friend which he was not allowed to post and which later on uh, were put together by by friends now these letters in ubare khater are very unusual some are very serious some are really hilarious you know you really you find them very amusing the lighter side of maran azad and uh, on the serious things he he wrote in one of the letters and this is relevant today in the context of islam also he says that uh, conformism or following the inherited belief is actually the the greatest hindrance to the growth of a mind and its conservative beliefs and these con- conservative beliefs are actually the the greatest roadblock in in human progress no other power binds it as do the shackles of conformity at times so strong is the grip of inherited belief that education and environment also can't loosen it so this is what maulana azad felt in 191940s that you cannot really follow taqlid you cannot follow inherited belief you can't cannot follow conformism and this indirectly hints towards the whole idea of istihad where independent thinking use of reason Uh, for the believers and even for others where you have to really open up and see the world with with an open mind on the lighter side he writes in one of the letters that today and he quotes actually he quotes two things one is a chinese chinese proverb uh, another is a, is a french author he quotes uh, when he writes about cheerfulness he says who is the wisest person the one who is ever cheerful and then he quotes a longish uh, this thing from a from a french uh, author again in support of cheerfulness 
And then he comments that today, unfortunately, men of piety, men of truth, people who claim to be religious scholars, etc., they move, they move around with a, you know, with, with so much depression. They they think that they are they are very they are very important people. They don't want to laugh in public. You know, this is not what the scholar is. You don't have to be jump you know, to look scholarly. You, know, you can be cheerful and still be a scholar. Still still be a man of religion. So so Morana was was so so clear about about his uh, about his views on 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 Malvis and he. He says, in the world of religion and spirituality, dry piety and coolness of behavior have gained such currency that it has become impossible to imagine a laughing face with piety and truth. So when he was so so fed up, he was so sick of, of these glum faces, and he wrote about it. That this is this is not religion. Well, you have to be cheerful. And then he quotes this uh, French uh, uh, author says that if you if you are depressed, it is not your just moral responsibility, not just social responsibility. Responsibility. No, you have to be. You have to be cheerful because your depression causes depression in your neighborhood. No? So you you don't have to be cheerful only for yourself. You have to be cheerful for others. No? So this is what Morana himself you know, tried to do. Though he was he seemed to be a very serious serious man, but he never posed as if he is a is a very glum man. Mujhir sahab perhaps might support me. We don't have a complete, complete, complete bibliography also of Maulana. The articles. I mean, we don't have. So I think these are some of the basic things. And if uh, Professor Mujhir Hassan's uh, initiative uh, today leads people to think about it, uh, give some kind of uh, incentive for doing more uh, academic research on Marana. Uh, I think uh, one of the important uh, purposes of uh, bringing out this volume will be served. I congratulate Professor Mushir Rasan for uh, um, and I think it requires very, very close reading because um, this is, you see the history in, in the making. See, there is some kind of immediacy, you see, when you read this kind of uh, reports which are there in the archives. So thank you very much for uh, inviting me on this occasion. And I once again congratulate Professor Mashuri Rasan for this very unique um, an innovative way of uh, reintroducing Morana to us. At the age of 35, Azad was elected Congress President in 1923. He delivered his first presidential speech exhorting the Hindus and Muslims to become equal partners in the freedom struggle. He was once again elected Congress President in 1940 when he presided over the Congress session at Ramgarh. The high moment in the speech was his excellent rendering of the concept of composite culture. Maulana Azad is regarded as a leading nationalist of his times. His firm belief in Hindu-Muslim unity earned him the regard and respect of both the Hindu and Muslim community. His views on Islam, composite culture and nationalism highlights the level and depth of his thought process. Uh, Professor Hassan, um, a lot how has been has been written about uh, Maulana Azad and debated over the past couple of decades. Uh, was there a felt need for this particular book, this aspect of Maulana Azad? Well, first of all, uh, there isn't that much written on uh, Maulana Azad, particularly in English. The number of books or essays are very, very few. Uh, secondly, you must realize that uh, Maulana Azad had a very long political and intellectual career uh, roughly from about 1915 onwards until his death in 1954 uh, and it was a very active political career and a very act active intellectual career 
So there are always going to be uh, one aspect or several aspects that would be of interest to a professional historian or for that matter a non-historian. Uh, so these these documents which are basically government reports on uh, the activities of Maulana, uh, they reveal another facet of his personality which is why they have been brought out. And as far as the inputs into this book is concerned, is it mainly based on archival records? It's based on reports, uh, CID intelligence reports that are available at the National Archives of India. Uh, but but one has tried to, 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 to develop a story by breaking up the documents into various sections. So uh, when you read these six sections, then you, you get a certain sense of what the Maulana's personality and his contribution was all about. Professor Hassan, we all acknowledge that uh, he had a multifaceted personality. He was a writer, a poet, a journalist, a politician, a nationalist. Which one aspect of his are you focusing more on this book? No, no. I mean, this is a sort of this is a, as I said a general a narrative on Azad, several different facets. But it brings out his political role uh, much more vividly and much more clearly uh, than his early life. Uh, and it is this political role which makes him uh, such an important figure because he stood for certain values uh, which were being contested in, in his own society or in our own society and steadfastly uh, pursued those values uh, which is what uh, where lies his greatness. And do you think his interpretation of uh, of Islam and his interpretation of pluralism is in some way kind of in conflict with, with people who currently interpret the same issues uh, in a different way? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in a sense, uh, that is why what makes his interpretation so much more relevant uh, because the idea of pluralism and to, uh, to trace its roots to, to the Holy Quran uh, it, it, it carries very important messages which were relevant during his lifetime and they are relevant even today. So there is this whole debate about the interpretation of Islam uh, and how uh, conformity is not the answer that one can take a critical approach and use one's aql or one's mind or one's judgment to understand many of the teachings of the Quran. 34 years ago, India lost one of the stalwarts of the freedom movement, Muhyiuddin Ahmad Abul Kalam Azad. When the end came on February 22, 1958, he had a few trusted friends at his bedside. The one most affected was Jawaharlal Nehru, who was losing a lifelong friend and mentor. There were not many belongings in the household. A dozen khadi kurta pajamas, few cotton and woolen sherwanis, a worn out hairbrush and thousands of books were his only worldly possessions. His greatest legacy to India was a mind of unsurpassed intelligence and deep humanism. Well, the book captures the essence of this nationalist and scholar Maulana Azad. The life and times of this great leader traverses a spectrum of personal traits for which he stood. And this book, Islam, Pluralism and Nationhood, is a fitting tribute to this great leader.